So in, in this video, what, what I want to do is um, answer some questions that uh, have been asked on the YouTube channel. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you to everybody who's um, subscribed and liked and added their comments. Um, I really appreciate also the constructive criticism. Uh, I know the audio has been very poor. I can say that I have ordered a new Canon camera with an external microphone and a tripod. I've been looking at YouTube videos to find the best combo for this type of vlogging really. Uh, I'm not a professional, it's a, it's a bit of a new side project of mine so far I'm enjoying it and I intend to continue. Um, but one of the most common questions I'm getting is how, how does one get into the super yacht industry? First of all, before you even consider working on board um, any, any type of vessel, you need to have a minimal amount of training. Now there's training schools all around the world. Um, the first entry level training you want to do is a basic safety training course called the STCW 2010. Now, STCW stands for Standards of Training, Certification and Watchkeeping. Now, what this course includes is a five-day course. It includes uh, a firefighting course, a first aid course, a sea survival course, and a personal safety and social responsibility course. Aside from this that you can do as well, which I would, um, would recommend, for those of you who want to join the deck department, I would recommend at least getting a powerboat level two, if you have a bit more experience, I would uh, recommend moving up to Yacht Master level. For us on board, uh, entry level deckhand will need to have a Yacht Master as they do bridge navigational watches. Now, if you're going more to the engineering side of things, uh, you want to do a five, I believe there's a five day course uh, called the AEC, which is the Auxiliary Engine course. There are multiple schools, as I said, around the world. If you're based in the south of France, what I do recommend is Blue Water. I started all my training from off of the watch level uh, all the way through to masters with Blue Water. Uh, I'm very satisfied with the service they provided. I was very satisfied with the, the, the instructors and the tutors and with the whole infrastructure of the school. They have a great simulation. The instructors are all uh, master mariners or former uh, Royal Navy captains, the ones I've, I did my courses with. Um, so that's pretty much what you need to do to start off with is, is your, your basic safety training and uh, depending on what department the, the course is uh, relative to that um, particular job. Now the other thing you'll need to get is your, your medical examination which is called the ENG1. Now this is a um, MCA recognized uh, certificate. You need to go to an MCA recognized doctor. It takes a probably anywhere between 20 and 40 minutes depending on your level of fitness and your level of health and your eyesight. And it costs, uh, I think, anywhere between uh, 80 to 200 pounds depending on the doctor, depending on where you are in the world. Now, the next step once you've done these courses is you want to, um, work on your on your CV. Um, the majority of you entering the end industry, you're not gonna have any experience. However, outside experience can help. So if you have worked in the past, say in the hospitality industry, uh, for the stewardesses, that, that really does help. Or you may have worked on, on tourist boats or, or spent some time at sea, whether it's on, on family boats or family holidays, you know, every little bit of experience does count. Now, what you want to do is, in your CV, obviously have a very good photo, be very professional, uh, make sure you have all your correct contact details, make sure you list your, your certification, and your and what's, what's also very important is we know what your hobbies are, whether you're into your fitness, or you're more into reading, uh, you know, from, for a captain, that is, that is quite important to me to know what you'd like to do in your free time. So once you've done your CV, what you want to do is you want to go online and go to as many um, crew agencies as possible. Blue Water have a crew agency, you've got a luxury uh, crew, A crew who I've mentioned in, in, in the past. There's, there's, there's a ton of them. Um, so what I recommend, join as many as you can and check in every single day. Don't expect to get a job in the first week. I have known of people to take sometimes two, three months before they get a full-time job or a seasonal position. Now, a lot of um, people new to the industry is what they do 
is they move to a, a, a yachting capital like Antibes or Palma here in the Mediterranean and they stay, they stay at these crew houses or they, they find share accommodation and what, what you do is a thing called dock walking. Now what is dock walking? Uh, dock walking is basically you, you buy yourself a nice clean polo shirt, make sure it's nicely ironed, you're well presented, clean shade, guys, nice haircut, ladies, um, hair tied back, presentable. Um, and then what you do, you print a number of CVs and you literally travel from port to port all the way along the coast and you walk the docks and you stop off at every single boat, speaking with the crew on board. If it's a smaller boat, it might be an owner. Try and find some work. You know, it will be probably uh, a day at a time, might be a few hours, might be two days. It might probably be for a shipyard period. It might be two weeks or up to four weeks. It depends on the boat's needs. Um, sometimes there are a lot of dock walkers. There's a lot of competition out there. Uh, don't let that put you off. You know, sometimes you need to be the right place at the right time. Now, the way you've got to approach this is be, be very polite. Uh, be honest. Do not lie. Don't don't dig yourself a hole. If you've got no experience, say I've got no experience, but I'm I'm willing to learn. Just show me what I need to do, and I can do it. So what will happen is either one of the if you look for example a deck hand, uh, one of the deck team or or the chief officer or in some cases the captain will hire you based on, on a day rate. Now day rates um, can can vary depending on the boat's budget and depending on where you are in the world and what is expected of you. Now normally don't expect any glamorous job because it's normally going to be a lot of sanding, uh, scrubbing the decks, polishing stainless steel, cleaning bilges, painting bilges, basically all the odd dirty jobs that no one really wants to do. But everybody has started at that level. So once you've gained a bit of experience of doing um, day work, um, you then build up your CV and captains can now see you've done a fair bit of day work and uh, they might be looking to employ a deck hand for the season. Um, and that's that's pretty much where you start to join the industry. It's um, it, it, There is competition out there, but if you're willing to sac you know make the sacrifice, get up early, go from port to port, um, you can do it. You know, I, if I can do it, believe me, anybody can do it. The one bit of advice I will give all new crew is don't be that crew member that's rolling out of the local pub at three o'clock in the morning because it's a very, very small industry and everybody knows everybody. So if you're that one person that's had one too many beers and you can, can't control your drink and the next day you're a complete write off and you're hungover, you've got bloodshot eyes, Honestly, don't even bother dot walking. So first thing I do when I see day workers is I check their eyes and I smell their breath. If there's a single scent of alcohol, I turn them down, turn, turn them away and say, you know, don't come work in my boat if you've been drinking the night before. Be focused. Remember, you're getting paid to do a job. This isn't a holiday, it's a professional industry. And we are here to set the standards for the rest of the industry, so remember that. My next bit of advice of, of working on board, if you're new to the industry, would be, be be the first one up in the morning. I know it's a cliche, but believe me, captains do see this and we do appreciate it. Start work 15 minutes early and finish 15 minutes late. If your job for the day has finished on time and you go on the inside and you see the interior crew still working be the first one there to help if you go into the galley and you see the the chef has a few pots and pans to wash up wash those up dry those up and put those away because you want to build up a good relationship uh, with all the crew and you want to show that you are dedicated and determined to succeed in this industry and you doing you do that by doing these small things now, a very uh, common thing also in this business is uh, what I like to call the first year cockies. Now, what the first year cockies are is people who have been uh, in the industry for about a year and have gained a little bit of experience and all of a sudden they think they, they're the know-it-alls. You know, they, they, they start questioning captains, they start back chatting. Now, on, on any vessel, uh, it, it, 
you know, it varies. Uh, I don't tolerate black chat. I can't tolerate first year cockies. Don't be that person. You don't know anything by the first year, especially if you're talking to somebody who's been doing it in the business for 10, 15, 20 years. It's just not worth it. You're doing yourself no favors. The other thing that I ask all crew to avoid, and I see it time and time again, and it, it is really irritating for me, is when you get crew who are working on board a vessel for a year or two as well, and they see dock walkers, and they kind of look down on them, and they talk down to them, and they forget that once upon a time they were in that position. So just remember, we all started from the beginning. You know, never talk down to people, never look down to people, help people. If there is no work on board your particular vessel, encourage them, you know, show them, um, give them a bit of advice, you know, give them something, talk to them. Um, but don't, don't just, you know, brush them off because it, it is a very difficult thing to, to move to a country, to move into unfamiliar situation and to go up to strangers and ask for work. You know, it's, it, it's in some cases, some people, it can be quite terrifying. So those are my initial bits of advice, how to start in, into the yachting industry. Um, so I hope that gives everybody a bit of an insight. Um, I will do a few more videos like this. I'm gonna answer, I'm gonna try and answer all the questions that have been posted on, on the YouTube channel. Again, thank you very much all for watching. I'm glad everybody's enjoying these videos. One thing I do want to add is uh, please do share these videos because I do want other people to, to be aware of this industry. Um, so I do believe it sometimes can be given a bad name. And what I'm trying to do in these videos, at the same time as showing everybody what's, what it's all about to work, is to show them, you know, these reports, for example, in, in the tabloids and the Daily Mail, it, it is just simply rubbish. You know, it is rubbish. In any business, in any company, in any job, anywhere in the world, there is going to be a percentage that's going to have a very difficult time, but the majority of it is great. So anyway, for now, this is um, the end of the, the vlog for answering your questions. Um, if you have any more questions, please just add a comment in the, below in the videos. If you want to me to film other things that you're interested in, I am going to show some more engineering side of things. And bear in mind that next week we are going to the shipyard for six months. So a lot of interesting things happening there as well. So for now, I'm going to clock off and uh, I'll see you guys in the next vlog.